And of course, it is the number one successful product that was invested in in Shark Tank history. They're full of shit. All right, let's go. This is what I'm thinking immediately. <laughs> Kevin's well, such an ass. All right, everybody. So, you know, this is actually the first time that I have uh, seen this in, I guess, real time, watching the video, reacting to it, uh, Bombas. So uh, Bombas uh, has been on the show. And of course, it is the number one successful product that was invested in in Shark Tank history. And it is all because of moi. That's why I'm wearing a big ass hat. And um, so I'm going to uh, rewatch the Shark Tank uh, pitch right now. It is Bombas. And because it has been trending, so many of you have wanted to know what went on behind the scenes. Why did these people uh, create such an amazing brand? What did I see in them? And what did those other four morons on the stage not see in them? And I will highlight that. And I'm going to give it to you real time because uh, I just totally forgot. This was six, seven, eight, maybe. Uh, 10 years ago and I'm still bragging about it. So but make sure though after this if you want to see more of these type of videos You make sure that you subscribe to more of my Shark Tank inside the pitch because I'm gonna give you access to my mind and as well as what people are thinking Let's have some fun with it. Here goes Bombas I'm about to watch this um Bombas thing, but uh, people are gonna ask me about why I'm wearing a top hat and I would add, and it has a little plastic in it because I want to make sure that the feather stays nice and crisp but my comment to you would be, why not? Why not wear a top hat? How many people you see you wearing a top hat lately? I knew you were gonna ask stupid ass stuff like that, um, but I'm wearing a top hat. Let's go into, you wanna learn? You wanna learn or you wanna think about my top hat? With what they believe is a better version of a common wardrobe staple. Sharks. I'm David. And I'm Randy. Our company is Bombas, and we're here today seeking $200,000 in exchange for a 5% equity stake. Bombas are athletic leisure socks engineered to look better, feel better, and with a mission to help those in need. The mass market athletic sock hasn't changed in decades. Same basic colors, same styles, same cardboard feel until now. We spent two years on research and development and came up with seven substantial improvements to the athletic sock. The result is Okay, I'm talking about socks here. Seven substantial improvements over socks. They're full of shit. All right, let's go. This is what I'm thinking immediately. Seven over so seven. Did you hear that? Seven. Designed and comfortable pair of socks you'll ever wear. But the story of Bombas goes way beyond re-engineering the athletic sock. We learned that socks are the number one most requested clothing item at homeless shelters. That really stuck with us. So for every pair of socks we sell, we donate a pair. So we hope you'll join us to make better socks for a better world. We brought some socks with us today for you guys to try on. Thank you. Sure. Absolutely. Here you go. Can I get these? Those two. Thank you. These two are for you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Sure. We'd like to take a quick moment while you're trying them on to take you through our seven substantial improvements. We started with Peruvian Pima cotton. This is a natural fiber that wicks moisture, breathes, stays warm in the winter, and cool in the summer. Up by the toes, we got rid of that annoying seam that's always causing irritation, creating our Invisita. Hold on now. Got rid of the annoying seam. Now, right now, I'm thinking, from a technical standpoint, how do you get rid of uh, that seam, right? Because what happens is when we put a sock together, it's two pieces of fabric, right? You gotta sew it on one side to hold together. If not, you would have to sew it down the middle and then you'd have a seam in the crease, which would be underneath the ankle. So I would assume this is something we call tubular goods. And tubular goods are, you know, when you see basically t-shirts that are tubular, what that is, is that it's a long, long tube. Let's say it's a mile long, chop, 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 chop. You cut a little hole on the side and you put the sleeves in. That's called tubular goods. And then there's other type of goods where you actually cut them, where you see the seam this is not a tubular good shirt because the seam is up top. So that's interesting already. In the midfoot area, we created our proprietary honeycomb arch support system and added our ultra comfortable performance footbed. And back by the heel, we created a Y-shaped stitch to create a natural cup around your heel and added a blister tab for the ankle socks. So David Randy, that is interesting. Dave Renner, I gotta tell you, specialty sports socks are everywhere. Mm -hmm. How are you different 
Our primary difference is that we tested socks from everything down to your cheap mass market multi-packs all the way up to your $18 to $22 niche athletic running socks, which is what you're talking about. We found out the major things that made those socks feel so much better and brought them down to a $9 price point. And on that $9 price point, we're still able to donate a pair for every pair purchased. I too am a fine-tuned athlete. I can open up to three bottles of wine in an hour and I like to do it with socks on. But I have a question philosophically about this idea of giving something away every time you sell. You have to double your sales to give me the equivalent returns that I get from a company that's not doing the same thing. Or your well, sales no, 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 because of the goodwill that you're putting out there. What's your wholesale? We sell exclusively online. What are your sales to date and when did... You know, I just noticed how I reacted immediately or your sales double. And I had never really, I think, been in a business before, like the Tom Shoes model and all that other type of stuff. That So I'm noticing now that they're, you know, remember, this picture is about an hour long, maybe 45 minutes long, and we, we can't grab it all, right? But something they had, must have said or their passion must have came across to me because, you know, now, now we look at it, right, and we say, hey, they, they give away a pair, but there must have been something that they had said in that, and I don't re recall that man said, wait a minute, or they double your sales because there was a level of interest I had there. When did you first start? So we first started in October of last year, and in the in the nine months since we launched, we have $450,000 in sales. Whoa. That's not bad. What nine will sales months? be next year? We think that we'll close the end of this year at $1.1 million. We think we'll close next year at 2.7, and the year after that, 4.9. Great sales for our 4.9? Okay, so, you know. average margin is 54%. Here's the biggest problem. Nobody ever comes into the tank or ever talks about business and says, you know, I'm going to do, listen, these guys said 4.450, 1.1, 2.7, 4.9. I mean, that is a hockey sick growth. My my daughter right now, I think she's three point uh, three and a half feet tall. If she keeps growing at that length, uh, at that speed, she's going to be 30 feet in three years. I don't believe this type of stuff. I mean, this is a new business. How do, how do, how do, how do you believe that? Right. This is this is. This is crap. That's shipped to the customer. Including the giveaway? Including, Including the, the giveaway. giveaway. And what is your month-to-month -month growth? So our month-to-month -month growth has plateaued this year. Ooh. But we've also been spending the last two months on fundraising. We've been able to circle $900,000 in outside funding. At what value? Uh, $4 million valuation. Guys, why are you worth $4 million? Well, it's worth what people will pay you for it. But you can get bozos or you can get me. You get uh, both with him. The godfather of bozos right here. Guys, a $4 million valuation in a total commodity of socks is ludicrous. And I think reality will strike because you guys are still sock cockroaches. You're nowhere. You have no market share yet. You have no retail exposure. You could have said that to the I, guy I, who I think started if you Under can Armour raise, too. If you can raise money any company, any, of any company. company. Every, you got to start somewhere. If any of these sharks give you money at that valuation, I will forbid it. It's ridiculous. I'm out. Thanks for your consideration. Appreciate your time. So, 400,000 in sales. Uh, impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Here All right, well, here's, here's the reality, right? So they're coming in and asking for $200,000 for 5%. That, that basically means that it is a $4 million valuation. Now, people always want to say, well, how do you come up with a $4 million valuation? Or how do you break down the valuation? It's pretty simple, right? You look at it in, I look at it in the denomination of 10. A 5% goes into, obviously, 100. It goes in 20 times, but I like to use the number 10. So what I do is I double the, the valuation of what they've asked, meaning I say 200,000 for 5% is really 400,000 for 10%. 10 times four is 4 million. Right, and that's how you come up with a $4 million valuation. In the market of trading, um, you can either trade amongst uh, growth sales, meaning how much we will give you that we can say you are gonna do your gross sales. So it's a multiple, meaning that if they do $400,000 in business, right? You can say, well, now you are trying to charge us $4 million. You are trying to charge us on a multiple of 10 times gross. Right, that's that's the multiple, or you can do it on EBITDA, right? Uh, whatever EBITDA stands for, it's a big long one, but but it's basically meaning net, meaning that listen, if you are doing four hundred thousand dollars in sales, and let's say you netted, you made profit of twenty five percent of that, that would be one hundred thousand dollars, right, of that first year sale. So. For a million dollar valuation is saying that you were trying to charge somebody 40 times the profit that you are making today. 
That means that if I bought the company and it stayed where it was today at that valuation, I would have to wait 40 years to make back the money. Here's the challenge. Will it work as a standalone online business for the long term mm -hmm. or is it supplementary? You haven't convinced me that this will work as a standalone product sale. Let me address that. So in the $450,000 that we've done today, we have spent $0 on advertising or customer acquisition. So all of those sales have come from people telling other people about our product. That's the concern. Word of mouth is not a scalable strategy. Right. So word of mouth was our proof of concept, right? That is what okay, told so us. Okay, so what's the next? So the next step is we're taking this money and hiring people, the customer acquisition specialist, who is gonna raise our base daily sales from 500 to three to $5,000 a day to build our baseline yeah, cushion. David, David, Hold on, partnerships David, with globally hotel recognized that's not And that is a gift and curse that is very scary. To have $400,000 in sales by word of mouth, maybe a video went viral, maybe, I don't even know if we had asked them, did they do any crowdfunding? And the reason why that's a gift and a curse is because that shows a really great um, a mushroom cloud on something. However, if now you're gonna hire somebody to specifically go after a crowd, you can't target word of mouth. Um, so what are they gonna do with the money? Are they gonna hire somebody to put up billboards? Are they gonna hire street teams? Are they going to hire to go direct to retail? Are they gonna go to on QVC? Are they gonna do pay-per-click? Are they gonna do affiliate marketing? And that's where the black hole can potentially become because once you have partners, you have to answer to your partners. It's no longer you and I, David and Randy, we're gonna make the mistakes together, we'll lick our wound. Now it is we have to give this money back to somebody and that is exactly where this idea, the concept of the power of broke really starts to take its place. That's not a good answer for me. I don't think you've done a good job of telling me what it's gonna look like and what the key advantage is going forward. I'm out. Great sock, though. Thank you. Before all the sharks are out, you want to change your valuation metrics? We're open offers if you guys want to. Well, let's let another one drop out and see what happens. <laughs> when I heard you just now say that you wanted to use the money to hire in people, I hate when I hear that. Here you are two smart guys and I feel you should be doing everything to run everything that you can right now, the two of you. So I really don't like that strategy. Emma. Lori said exactly what I was thinking. You've plateaued. And you know when you're viral, i.e. word of mouth, right? Now's the time, nine months in, you should not be plateauing, right? And I get now you want to spend money because you have to. My biggest problem is, when you look at Warby Parker, when you look at Tom's, they're very high margin, much higher dollar items. A $9 sock, when it's all said and done with a $5 margin, there's just not enough margin dollars in each sale and each customer, and that's always gonna make you have to run faster and further. And for those reasons, I'm out. I, I agree with Cuban because he said exactly what I said first, right? Um, he said that the virality is something that they struck on and they built off of, but that's kind of like a one hit wonder, right? Um, I don't know if Cuban, I don't know. I, I'm sure we asked how much it costs to make and how much it costs to sell. And I'm sure at the stage they were at, the, the, the stocks cost a lot because of course they were buying a minimum amount. Um, so he didn't feel like the margin was there, but in socks, there are a, a good amount of margins if, you, if it's done the right way. So uh, I respect why Cuban was out. Very, very logical. Thank you. Thank you for your Okay, now we're down to one shark, happens to be the fashion guru. You know that scene in those movies in the ER where they're bringing the patient and the heart is slowly. Paddle circle. That's happening right now. So. You have a chance now to readjust your valuation before you hear from the last shark who happens to be in the fashion industry. Do you think you should do that or are you going to go down with the I've heard from four other well-educated people in business. They obviously don't agree with that valuation. Do you have a different valuation that you would like to offer? So we, we came here today, obviously with your background, wanting to strike a deal with you. So. Based on that, we would we would probably be willing to go down to. I mean, how about 
$200,000 at 10%, that gives you a $2 million valuation. That cuts Ooh, our valuation in half. But we think you can bring you a- you see that? Boys and girls, what a nosedive. Have you ever had a house that you were like, oh man, I've done so much, I've invested in this. I want to get $300,000 for the house. Somebody said, I'm not interested. You go, 150. Think about that, what they did with that valuation. They cut it right in half, right away. You can bring a ton of value to this. 200,000 for 10% is your counter. So you cut the valuation Look at Randy looking at him like he's crazy. Two million. Specifically for Damon. What, it's only a Damon John deal? I mean, it is. What I other mean, options you have? It would be, it'd be foolish to say that he doesn't bring value to, you know, so, an immense me, amount of value. So guys, I was about to be out, but I like that valuation only because it looks like you do want to get to work. 200,000 for 20%. Oh! Very sobering to hear reality strike. Very And sobering. I was out already. Sure. I had already was thinking about the next person walking through that door. Sure. And that small indication of you wanting to make a better deal. We're here to make a deal. Okay. I am offering you 200,000 for 20% and then we'll just get to work. So I think, I think we really respect your offer. I think that the challenge with that, and I understand that you might want more equity, is that we need the additional equity to go out and raise capital without giving away 40% of the company What are you raising total. the capital for? We're raising the capital to hire and spend on marketing and you know build out our team. Inventory and product as well. Inventory and product, I'll finance. You'll finance that outside of our deal. I'll finance the inventory. Regardless I'll, of how much it is. Regardless of how much that is, but I, I would have to question what you're doing with the marketing and everything else, because that's a black hole of advertising. Sure. So um, I will finance the inventory. All right, well, now, now I gotta break this down to you. I, I don't do these deals anymore, I don't finance inventory, and I'll tell you why. At that time, I was still really heavy in fashion. I still am decently heavy in fashion. Um, and my structured deal with my uh, you know, uh, organization that I work with is if I get a billion dollars in order as well, I can just, as long as they were triple credit rated, which I love to, meaning you're dealing with a retailer, you know that the retailer has credit, you know you're gonna get paid, right? So I knew that I can get paid. But now, uh, you know, people don't understand the difference. You have different levels of conflict if your um, investor is also financing your goods because if they're investing, and so let's say these guys were doing $10 million in business and they were, they were kicking off a $2 million profit annually. Well, if I needed to loan them also another $5 million and at the bank rate, let's say rates today, uh, I think on the street it's 15%, but a bank is probably about 12. If I need to get 10% on my money annually, so now I'm loaning them $5 million, loaning myself $5 million, right? Really, because I'm part of the company, and I can make $500,000 annually, 10%, meaning I don't care how you run the business. And if you fail the business, I still get my my money because I would be holding the property of the intellectual property. But now as a partner, if I have to make decisions on that side and you're like, hey guys, we're not selling enough socks here. We need to sell it at a discount to Burlington Coat Factory or various other things. And I know that if you don't sell that time and get rid of that inventory, I may not get my profit on my $500,000 or my $5 million, excuse me. I may not get the 500,000 on my $5 million. Well, now I may, be in a conflict because I may say, get rid of the goods, sell them. So now I think that as a partner, it is very challenging to have both sides of it as well. Um, but in regards to negotiating a deal, when you're negotiating a deal, you may be looking over, well, you know what? I wanted to give the guy 15%, he's asking 20%, but if that guy or girl is financing the goods, that's another 10 or 15% you don't have to pay to a bank or somebody else. But people normally only think about the percentage of the ownership of the company. And that's why this is critical when it comes to deal making. Where is the conflict with the partner? Where will you have to spend money regardless? Because who says the bank will even finance these guys uh, uh, with their goods? Because if we're selling the TJ Maxx or Burlington or, or, or JCPenney's or Saks, well, we know they have customers. But if you're selling online to a million individuals, there's no credit there. There's no organization there. 
So that's always the conflict when you come to dealing with these type of deals that people don't understand until you get really into the mix of a business. <clears throat> so our counter to that would be $200,000 at 15% with a $200,000 line of credit. Is that just so crazy? Okay, guys. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll try to meet you somewhere in the middle. I'm going to finance the inventory, $200,000 for 17.5%. That's it. No line of credit. No. I'm, I'm financing the... Let me break down why they wanted a line of credit. So they wanted, they already knew that the inventory would have been financed, but they need operation money, meaning the line of credit. The line of credit still is that black hole that we don't know if they're going to do well with, right? What are they going to do with the, that? You know, we'd have the use of proceeds, but they may hire some fancy schmancy PR company, or they may hire, you know, some, I don't know, some, they may put billboards in Times Square. So that's why that $200,000 is kind of like the, 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 the negotiation and the trigger in the middle of everything. I got to get their heads out of that and I need to be able to finance inventory because I have a better I have a better way of knowing that I have a solid form of collateralization because if they can't sell that inventory well then I could take that inventory and I can move it to a Burlington or a, uh, somebody uh, uh, as we call it a second door I have something physical but once that $200,000 is gone and a whole bunch of expensive I don't know fancy schmancy people who say they're gonna do pay-per-click it's gone the, the goods. I'm already. I'm on the hook for the goods right now. Can we uh, can we take a moment and call our CFO? Uh, no. Your CFO gave you the bad advice already to ask for that valuation. It's you guys, and I don't want to talk to anybody else. As partners, I'm going to talk to you guys, and you're going to talk to me. This is another critical lesson in business. Uh, when you are dealing with companies and corporations that have four members, five members, 10 members, you just want to talk to one person. Because some of those people own 2%, 10%, 19%, 100%. It doesn't matter. I want to speak to one person and you speak to me. Whether you speak to one of my team members, staff, my partners, whatever the case is, they get a direct answer from me. Because what happens after that? Well, then now you have, what do they call the chicken coop? I don't know, the whatever the case is, the chuckle patch. Everybody wants to make a comment. I don't want to hear all that. I want to talk to one person, one person only. You don't want me to bring my mother to the meeting, right? Or my wife or Mink or little Damon. You don't care what they, they think. You want to hear one final answer coming out of one party from that side. That's it. So don't bring all your damn friends around uh, when I want to have a conversation with you. And I ain't going to bring little Damon. Well, maybe I will. Ah, I can't believe this. All right. You have a deal. We'll take oh, deal. Oh, 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 oh. And the best oh, thank, you, thank you. All right, you guys. History. Great decision. Great decision. Great decision. Great decision. Great decision. Thank you. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. All right excited about it today as I was yesterday. Why? Because we're at the point where we're giving away 100 million units and garments to people in need. And they have changed my entire life on the way that I do business. And they ended up educating me more than I've educated them. Thank you to Dave and Randy and all the people that have supported this amazing, amazing product and or brand. And if you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe to Inside the Pitch. Peace. Thanks for watching. I wish you love and power your life. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Check you later.